Welcome and thank you for viewing this video. We have seen a significant shift in security operations from moving to a very manual process of identifying, investigating, and responding to potential incidents to finding ways of more effectively orchestrating activities across security teams or even automating low-level common tasks. When discussing the security orchestration automation and response or the SOAR market, there's a lot of discussion around orchestration and automation. But one critical area that is sometimes overlooked is the role that threat intelligence plays in addressing SOAR. So joining me today is Megan Horner, the Senior Director of Product Marketing for Threat Connect, and also Brian Robertson, who is the Principal Product Marketing Manager for the NetWitness Platform and NetWitness Orchestrator. So Megan, let's go to you first. The NetWitness Orchestrator is built on Threat Connect technology. So can you give us a history of how Threat Connect has leveraged threat intelligence? Hi, Brittany. Thanks a lot for inviting me to have this conversation with you. As far as your question, the concept of applying threat intelligence to decision-making and security is one that Threat Connect is really built on. And it stems from this idea of being empowered to be more predictive when it comes to protecting an organization. Of course, there's always going to be an element of reactiveness. You need to react to threats as they present themselves if they were previously undetected. But if you're only reacting, you're playing a never ending game of catch up and clean up. Our founders recognize this, they lift it. When you start to introduce threat intelligence in a strategic way to a security program, it gives you a more holistic view of what's happening outside your organization and allows you to map that to your organization's own threat landscape. What I mean by that is all of that information that's available about threats that exist, and there's a lot of it, aggregating that, analyzing it, and identifying the most relevant threats to your business. Then, using that information to drive security processes and make decisions. It really boils down to we know the threat landscape is huge and overwhelming. We've been hearing it for years. But having a security solution that will partner with you to take that ocean of intelligence and distill it down to what's relevant to you, that's what Threat Connect was created for, and that's what we still do to this day for our customers. Thanks, Megan. That's an interesting look at where Threat Connect started. We have seen an increased interest around SOAR in the market, and I know the technology behind Threat Connect and NetWitness Orchestrator has significantly evolved in the last year to focus more on the SOAR market. So can you take us through what capabilities have been introduced to meet the needs of this market? Yeah, absolutely, great question. This was a natural evolution of Threat Connect's capabilities and one that we were marching towards regardless of if we had a specific name market to fit in or not. Just a moment ago, I was talking with you about how using Threat Connect helps to identify what your, meaning each specific organization that we work with, identifying what their threat landscape is to introduce an element of relevancy and focus to their security program. The next natural step is to use that to make decisions. There's a saying I love to mention probably more often than I should, which is if you aren't using threat intelligence to make decisions, then it becomes academic. It becomes something that's interesting to know of or be aware of. We want to enable organizations to operationalize that intelligence and make decisions quickly. As Threat Connect evolved and we learned more about how our customers were using that information to act, we wanted to enable them to do that faster with an element of standardization. Acting on threat intelligence typically involves using it to make a decision that drives action from a member of the security team. And by member, what I mean is either an actual human that may be able to leverage that information or a security tool that you may have in place, like a SIM, firewall, or something you may be using on your endpoints. That requires sending the information in a format that the person or system consuming it can understand. And I think it goes without saying in security, time is of the essence. For cybersecurity teams to simultaneously address the pressure of attacks and maximize the efficiency of limited staff, they must have repeatable, documented automation and workflows. And the real kicker is to have those repeatable and documented processes, but also be empowered to alter those as more information is introduced. Think of it as dynamic decision-making. We'll know more tomorrow than we do today, and processes must be able to be changed as necessary to support that. Taking it one step further, incorporating case management in Threat Connect really completes this trifecta of analysis, investigation, and response. We're now giving organizations the ability to take an indicator, automate much of the process of understanding it better to determine relevancy, and then acting on it if necessary. Sometimes that action is some sort of escalation to another team to further investigate, and that further investigation can be run out of Threat Connect, 
enabling any new artifacts to be collected and stored as intelligence to be used during future analysis efforts. This also introduces the capability to link intelligence in cases. As an analyst working through a case, it's really helpful, you know what, I'd actually say it's critical to understand if there was a previous investigation open that could be related to what you're working on now. You need insight into the previous work done across the rest of the team that may relate to what you're currently looking at. Ideally, that would be one-to-one -one match, as in the indicator of compromise I just pulled out of an email header was also seen in a previous case, but it's also those little nuggets or breadcrumbs that may allow me to get one more step ahead, allow me to be more predictive during investigation and response. Threat Connect automatically makes suggestions when it comes to threat intelligence or cases that may be related without involvement from the user. It's essentially us serving as your ally and saying, hey, we think these two are related because this adversary was related to bad.com and bad.com also appears in this active case you're working on. You might wanna check out that adversary because there might be a connection. So tying this back to your original question around the evolution of Threat Connect to meet the needs of the market. What the market needs isn't a new widget, it's a partner. And with Threat Connect, you can start to see a true partnership forming between a security platform and the analyst. Threat Connect becomes an enabler for the analyst, allowing them to make more confident decisions while being more efficient. Now, Brian, let's shift over to you and the NetWitness perspective. Can you talk to us a little bit about how you see the threat intelligence adding value to orchestration and automation activities within our NetWitness orchestrator solution and even beyond our solution? Yes, and thank you for having me, Brittany. I think the biggest thing to think about is that threat intelligence is more integral than just triggering an alert. Threat intelligence needs to be leveraged to validate the incident. For example, we know that security teams can be inundated with alerts. How do they determine which ones to focus on? If you look at how an analyst works through the alerts and incidents in their queue, almost all of them include a set of atomic indicators, whether they're IPs, domains, file hashes, et cetera. Part of the process of identifying the nature and severity of these issues is understanding which of these indicators have been observed as related to the threat and threat actors in the wild. With rich contextual intelligence built right in, the process of further validating enriching indicators can be automated, saving the analysts a huge amount of time. This lets analysts move faster and with higher accuracy. What's more is as analysts gain additional context on indicators, Orchestration can automatically feed this context back into their intelligence program, improving future detections, and even automatically informing control infrastructure such as firewalls, proxies, antivirus, et cetera, to automate future prevention. Now, another important benefit is the ability to not only understand the intelligence context of a specific indicator, but also to intelligently understand when an indicator may be related to another indicator that are used by the same threat, actor, or campaign. This means that analysts can hone investigations beyond what just triggered the alert and search either manually or automatically for any observations of related indicators and behavior related to the investigation. This helps analysts more confidently uncover the entire scope of an attack. Great, so with threat intelligence playing such a big role, do you feel having the ability to leverage threat intelligence to its full potential differentiates NetWitness Orchestrator from other solutions out there trying to address the needs of SOAR? Great question. First and foremost, it comes down to the richness of intelligence being leveraged for the SOAR solution, which is built on a leading threat intelligence platform. Intelligence about indicators, actors, and campaigns is a never changing thing. With robust threat intelligence, these changes are aggregated quickly and at scale, meaning the most up-to-date and relevant information is available. Next, accuracy and fully exposed context is critical here, since not all intelligence is created equally. For example, there may be an indicator as part of an investigation that has been tagged as suspicious. An analyst needs to understand not only the nature of the indicator, but the nature of how it was reported and who reported it in the first place. With robust, mature threat intelligence systems, analysts can begin automating threat hunting efforts based on known threat actors and campaigns. This allows them to closely tie intelligence to orchestration playbooks. The system can help sweep an environment for observations of behavior 
related to that intelligence in the system, serving as a way to surface high value alerts and leads for analysts to chase down. And they can even automate workflows to remediate issues in the environment, such as escalating issues to an IT ticketing system and even automating the implementation of preventative controls. Okay, thank you. So from both of your perspectives, Brian and Megan, how do you see store technology evolving and what role do you feel threat intelligence plays in that evolution? <laughs> it is interesting to think about. I believe as store technologies evolve, and as orchestration and automation is adopted by Evolve Sim and XDR approaches to threat detection and response, having good, globally sourced, community analyzed contextual intelligence will continue to play a critical role in security operations. SOAR, serving as an analyst's primary window into the SOC, will continue to provide opportunities to better integrate ever expanding intelligence data sets into all SOC processes and technologies, really lowering the burden on analysts and administrators by automating mundane tasks. As orchestration becomes trusted in SOC environments, I think we'll see a step towards full end-to-end -end automation of more of the SOC. Now the human element will always be critical, but as we combine high proven intelligence with highly integrated automation, I think we'll see more alerts and incidents that can be fully handled via orchestration with very little human intervention. Well said, Brian. To add on to what he said, because I agree with all of it, I really see SOAR technology streamlining security operations and response workflows by providing insights to help drive analyst investigations to faster resolutions using relevant threat intelligence, machine learning, and risk-based prioritizations specific to the organization. I spoke about the ability to link intelligence to cases briefly earlier, and this is really a strong first leap, and hopefully we'll see this happening at a greater scale. The value of automation and orchestration capabilities of SOAR are not to be minimized. What they're enabling for organizations as far as process efficiency, reducing the burden on analysts, along with a multitude of other benefits are invaluable but it's with intelligence that we can start to get better at making those decisions. Not just working faster, but working smarter. I see SOAR technology serving up recommendations and insights that the analysts didn't even know to look for, which, like I mentioned, really is moving the technology to being a true strategic partner to security teams. Thank you, Brian and Megan, for your great insight, and thank you all for viewing the session. To wrap it up, it's becoming very clear that threat intelligence plays a very strategic role in properly identifying true issues and minimizing chasing false positives, while also helping streamline those issues or incidents that get addressed. So to find out more, please visit us at www.netwitness.com. Thank you so much.